Hey y'all, spooky season is here. And if you're looking for a show to whet your appetite for a little haunted history, then I'd like to invite you to check out Southern Gothic, a chart-topping history podcast that explores some of the most infamous legends, folklore, ghost stories, and hauntings of the American South. We've covered all sorts of stuff from the Bell Witch of Tennessee to the disappearance of the Confederate submarine, the H.L. Hunley, not to mention our deep dives into the local lore of some of America's oldest and most haunted cities like New Orleans, Charleston, and St. Augustine. So if you're ready for a little good old-fashioned Halloween storytelling with a commitment to quality historical research, then be sure to check out Southern Gothic today. It's available now on all your favorite podcast apps. Hello, everyone. It's Takuyi here. And I'm Gabby. And we are the hosts of History of Everything, a podcast which you can probably guess by the name is, well, I mean, it's about everything. Do you want to know why people thought potatoes were evil and would give you syphilis? Are you curious about all the stories of the terrible and stupid ways that people have kicked the bucket over the years? Do you want to hear tales about all of the different badasses of history and the lives that they had brought to life? Well, if so, then look no further. History of Everything is just the right podcast for you. It's available on Spotify, Pandora, and anywhere else that you get your podcast from. Join us for some fun and just see how weird and wacky history can be. The Inbox of Oddities, where we share your correspondence with us, with you, if that makes any sense. I think I follow. Yeah. yeah. Emails, social media messages, anything like that. We get a lot of people telling us stories, spooky stories of things that have happened to them, and we always encourage that. But you can record anything, you know, just something weird happened in your life, or you can just write us an email and yeah. share it. Did you find a carrot that looked like a piece of anatomy or meet an alien? We want to know both of those things. Especially if they both happened at the same time. Oh, my God. Wow. Lisa, who is one of our founding members, um, wrote, Cat and JG in box 616, JG talked about the perils of picking up a hot pepper. <laughs> I have a wild story about that. I can't bear spicy food, so I rarely touch hot peppers. One day, I was making a mango salsa and decided to use a microplane to add finely grated jalapeno to get just a hint of heat. I rinsed and washed my hands a bunch of times while I was cooking, but when I woke up in the morning, I couldn't figure out why the palms of my hands were red and hurt like I had scalded them. Apparently, I didn't wash them well enough And the oils from the pepper burned my hands. Oh, my goodness. They felt better by the end of the day, but uh, that was super weird. And I had to laugh when Kat said that a Middle English term of endearment was Chuck. Mm -hmm. My mom's childhood name was Chuch. Chuch. Which is a Polish term for endearment. My dad called her that, too. H and K looked a lot alike in my dad's handwriting the two letters. So it got to be a joke at Christmas. Like who's this Chuck that dad bought all these gifts for (laughs) one year. He ordered a cake from a bakery and told him to write happy birthday church on it. And he told him how to spell it. C H U C H Mm -hmm. with an H not a K. When he picked up the cake, they had written happy birthday church H not K. He was furious and refused to take the cake. (laughs) But we all thought it was hysterical and that he should have brought the cake home. I guess the moral is always check the ticket when you order the cake. Absolutely. Those are some of my favorite cake fails is when the decorator misunderstands the note. Right. Or screws up the punctuation and it gives it a whole different meaning. Right. (laughs) Like happy birthday, Dick. If you put a comma in there. You know, it means something entirely different. Assuming that, you know, the guy's name is Dick. You put a comma in there, it's happy birthday, Dick. Right. Right. The guy's name. Right, but it changes the meaning for those who read it. I don't think you understand how commas work. 
You don't understand how cake works. Anne writes, I love, love, love the Box of Oddities podcast. I love both of your voices and the way you spin a tale that is truly freaky. You have great charisma together, and I enjoy your podcast more than any other. Aw. That's sweet. Keep them coming. Flying my freak flag from Lebanon, Maine. Oh, Lebanon. Yeah. Oh, and I came across a story. I'm not sure if you've already covered it. I'm not going to tell you about it, though, because I'm going to use it. All right, fine. Brandon writes, it's been 2,141 days, and I just now got my first boo effect. I was listening. I've been listening since May of 2018. My God. Wow. That was early. And I'm uh, just very happy to finally have gotten one. It was box 610 with Dr. Strange. I mean, Benedict Cumberbatch (laughs) being kidnapped. Literally scrolling through TikTok this morning before work, and I found a TikTok regarding unknown celebrity facts, and one of them was that. I wish it was something more substantial, but a win is a win, am I right? I wish I had friends like you in real life. You two were amazing. Uh, I want to make some boo artwork, and I hope to one day get that finished and sent to you guys. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. We always love artwork. In fact, we're decorating the studio now for uh, the video version of the Box of Oddities podcast. And uh, man, I wish that we had brought some of the stuff that people had sent us before we moved to Ecuador. It would look so good on the bookshelves. Like the shrunken head, yeah, or the snake in a in a bottle. We really had to be conservative, though, with our packing. We could have gotten the X ray with of the guy with the uh, barbecue tongs in his butt, though. That that would have been pretty easy to. That's true. Yeah, that's fine. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Am we, I right? We've got hindsight because you know it was his butt, and X rays give you sight in. Hi, <clears throat> we're on threads, and Max Brandstetter posted, what's your favorite podcast segment intro slash catchphrase? The Box of Oddities gets me every time with, what you got for me? (laughs) (laughs) Max, by the way, the uh, founder and producer of Max Podcasting Wild Business Growth Podcast. I like Max. He does a good job. Carrie and Danny, who are members of the Order of Freaks on Patreon, wrote, "Uh, I'm not sure if this is a boo effect. But y'all are super dialed in on my fears and phobias so far this year. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Deja vu, owls, scurvy, belly button stuff. Drop an episode that includes slipping on an icy sidewalk, peeing yourself upon impact and freezing to the sidewalk, and a fetus grows teeth in the womb, you've got bingo. Oh, my God. Those are all valid. Yeah, yeah. I'm not laughing at you. I am laughing with you. It's a sympathetic laugh is what it is. I think we mentioned my sister is also afraid of belly buttons, so no worries. I'm used to it. As we've mentioned, we love it when you send us your stories in your voice. Like Alice did. Hi, Kat and JG. I'm just listening to the inbox of oddities number four, and I'm listening to the uh, discussion about Band-Aids and coleslaw and car keys being found in coleslaw. And it reminded me of a story an ex-boyfriend would tell me in the mid nineties. Now, hopefully restaurant standards have, have been raised since this time. Although I, I am, I am skeptical of that. He used to work on his car a lot and he also worked at a diner style restaurant. I will not name the restaurant. And he used to complain that he would have engine grease on his hands and it, it would not come off. He would try lava soap. I don't even know if they still make that, but it used to be, you know, it had uh, pumice in it and was extremely gritty. He tried orange oil miracle soap you, as seen on TV Uh, That wouldn't get it off. And he discovered one day when he was mixing the coleslaw by hand, as they do often in some of these restaurants in large buckets, that mixing the coleslaw with his hands would remove all of the engine grease, including the engine grease stuck under his fingernails. Now I think about this pretty much every time I go out to eat and I have coleslaw. And I just, I just pray to the powers that be 
that whoever made that coleslaw was please dear god in heaven wearing gloves or at the very least not working on their their engine uh before they mix it so in, enjoy that hopefully this is intelligible because i am driving to work and there's probably some some car noise in the background although i am at a at a traffic stop because it's it's you know it's the east coast and the baltimore area and it's a lot of traffic and you can cut that part out because nobody nobody cares about my traffic. But have a good day. Well, that's where you're wrong, Alice. Everybody cares about your traffic, or at least traffic in general. I know. I find traffic incredibly interesting. Steve sent us a picture of a kangaroo in his yard. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. As we talked about one of the... As we talked about in one of the Zoom meetings, I thought you guys would like to see this guy waiting patiently at the front door this morning. Thank you, Steve. I am dying. <laughs> He's so cute. Steve from Oz. Sam, another member of the Order of Freaks, in fact, a moderator uh, on, the, uh, pat on Patreon, he wrote, Every time you guys mention scurvy, I become uncomfortably aware of how little vitamin C is in my diet. Mm. Yeah. Sam, you have to take care of yourself. You're one of my favorite people. A couple other quick comments from Patreon. Uh, Rick and Steve wrote a couple of things. Uh, Thank you for always blurring that line between entertainment and morbidness. <laughs> and then here's a random thought. As a young lad, Steve had a funeral home on his paper route, and he would always ask them for empty boxes. <laughs> I love those guys. <laughs> Ken sent a message, thought you guys might like this or maybe knew about it. The main hermit. Yeah, that guy. Yup. For 27 years, Christopher Knight lived alone in the woods, keeping tabs on hikers, canoeists, and other temporary residents of the grounds. And, and just to clarify, it's not the Christopher Knight that was on the old Brady Bunch show. Who? Oh, wait, did he marry the America's Next Top Model? Something like that. Okay, yeah. I know who right. that is. Well, he's got that line of trendy mid-century furniture now christopher knight oh yeah uh, uh, okay anyway it wasn't him when he was confronted by a game warden in 2013 knight admitted that he was responsible for an average of around 40 robberies a year despite the likely protestations of family and friends who dismissed tales of a hermit lurking somewhere in the woods <laughs> lurking. his idea <laughs> lurking in the woods his identification proved that someone had been watching and waiting for nearly three decades. See, we told you, people in Maine, they're lurkers. They're lurkers. They lurk. Ken in Hawaii. Thanks, Ken. I wrote him back and I was like, uh, actually, the Maine hermit used to listen to me while I was on a local radio station. That's true. So he mentioned that. He that is was, a legend. It was so weird. Yeah. This comes from Indy, and Indy lives in Oregon. Hi, Kat and JG. I have Alice in Wonderland syndrome. <sighs> It's pretty trippy and apparently more common than you'd think. I had multiple episodes as a child around age 8 to 13 and once or twice as an adult. During episodes, I experienced perceptual hallucinations, mainly distortions of time and space. For example, I might reach for my bedside lamp, but it would seem to take forever for my hand to reach the switch. As if I was moving in slow motion, then, during a different episode, time would seem to speed up. Other times, the distortion was of my spatial awareness. I would lay in bed at night, and it would suddenly feel like the room had shrunk, becoming terribly claustrophobic. Other times, it was as if the room had grown bigger, or maybe I had shrunk. Imagine you're lying on a cozy twin bed that magically turns into a Texas king-size bed. Unlike other reported cases of AWS where the individual body parts are distorted, the shape and size ratio between items didn't change for me. Everything grew or shrank proportionately, as if every atom of universe was closer or further apart. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah. The episodes never scared me, like Alice herself. I was curious, and I even tried a few simple experiments. The hard part was that I couldn't explain it to anyone. I tried to explain it to my mother, and to her credit, she did sincerely listen. But all I got was a dismissive, don't worry, dear, you were probably dreaming. 
I would have the same response when I try to tell my mother about my eerie OCD impulses, which also started around age eight. In addition to Alice in Wonderland syndrome and OCD, my experience of reality is non-typical in other ways, too. I wonder if these conditions are related. I once had deja vu almost every day for an entire year. Oh. I've had my own personal Mandela effect involving the movie Good Morning Vietnam. I have a rare condition called non-24 circadian rhythm disorder, where my body clock is longer than 24 hours. Ooh. Side note, you should... Totally look into chronotypes and rare sleep disorders. Well, that sounds fascinating and terrible. I've also been diagnosed with processing disorder, ADHD, and autism. I am several flavors of neurodivergent, so I'm lucky that I grew up in a relatively enlightened time. So far, I haven't been subjected to an exorcism, tried for witchcraft, or even given invasive mental health treatment. I'm so glad. I would like to ask everyone in the freak community a favor. If you have a child in your life, please listen to them. Really, listen. If they tell you about a weird experience, don't dismiss it. Don't assume it's a vivid imagination or attention-seeking behavior. Even if you don't believe them, validate their experiences. Encourage the child to tell you more. Ask the child to draw a picture or write about it in a journal. Better yet, Ask the child to tell you about their experience, record it, and post it to the Freaks group. Ooh. I wonder how many other people would end up saying, hey, I've experienced that. No kidding. Postscript, boo effect, after listening to episode 615, I started writing this reply, but I did not finish it. Hello, ADHD. <laughs> the next day, I chose another episode of Boo to listen to while uh, taking a walk. Episode 5 in which a listener writes in about her experience with Alice in Wonderland Syndrome. That evening, I watched an old episode of Star Trek, Shore Leave, which includes the characters from Alice in Wonderland. And that evening, I chose a podcast to help me fall asleep. It was an episode of Science Versus called When Eyes See Lies. Yep, you guessed it. Alice in Wonderland Syndrome. Wow. Curiouser and curiouser. Indeed. Thank you for taking us on weekly trips through the Looking Glass, Indy, from Oregon. Thank you, Indy. Aloha, mamá. ¿Dónde andas? <laughs> Seguro de compras. Tengo mucho que contarte. Hawaii es increíble. He estado de un lado a otro comunidad. Todos son súper talentosos. Ya reparamos otro helicóptero Black Hawk y oficialmente formamos nuestro equipo de fútbol. Para la próxima, te cuento cómo voy con el surf y me cuentas qué te pareció el podcast que te compartí. Okay? Te quiero mucho. Be all you can be. Visitando goarmy.com diagonal español. There are really many reasons to listen to our podcast, Big Picture Science. It's kind of a challenge to summarize them all, Molly. Okay, here's a reason to listen to our show, Big Picture Science, because you love to be surprised by science news. We love to be surprised by science news. So, for instance, I learned on our own show that I had been driving around with precious metals in my truck before it was stolen. That was brought up in our show about precious metals and also rare metals, like most of the things in your catalytic converter. I was surprised to learn that we may begin naming heat waves like we do hurricanes. You know, prepare yourself for heat wave Lucifer. I don't think I can prepare myself for that. Look, we like surprising our listeners. We like surprising ourselves by reporting new developments in science and while asking the big picture questions about why they matter and how they will affect our lives today and in the future. Well, we can't affect lives in the past, right? No, oh, I, I guess that's a point. <laughs> So the podcast is called Big Picture Science, and you can hear it wherever you get your podcasts. We are the host. Seth is a scientist. I'm a science journalist. And we talk to people smarter than us. We hope you'll take a listen. Clark writes, hey, y'all. Hope you're well. I have a pretty ridiculous boo effect for you. I've actually been meaning to write in about it, but then I heard Cat joke about the moon not being real, and I had to tell you. <laughs> My coworker is a flat earther and proud of it. But there's so many other off the wall conspiracies and beliefs that he has. I felt like I had to make a list. One, the earth is flat. Two, the earth is the center of the universe. Three, dinosaurs aren't real and all scientists and paleontologists are just misguided. Four, 
Earth is a giant battery with the sun and moon as the negative and positive terminals. Hmm. Five, you can't get to space because the Earth is covered with a huge dome. Ah, Truman Show style. Oh, the Truman Show. Six, since the Earth is covered in a big dome, you can't get to space. So in turn, the space programs are a sham. And seven, Bigfoot and other cryptids are more energetic beings, where you can't see them, but you can feel them. Apparently, he's felt Bigfoot's presence. <laughs> that sounds like... <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought physically he felt Bigfoot like felt him up. Yeah, no, and that sounds very right innuendo-y. By the, by the nuts and oh, oh my god. god, that's exactly what I'd say. Especially if I was Bigfoot. I wish I could say that he's joking about all this, but I do find it entertaining sometimes, even though he completely disregards science and logic. I feel like this would be hilarious to share on Boo. Maybe the shallow end? Mm. Have a great day. I hope this brought a chuckle. And then he sent me a picture of a bird, so I'm not oh, sad about that. That's great. <laughs> yeah, we've got a friend that's kind of like that. He owns a bunch of apartment buildings and stuff, and uh, he has stories like that that he tells all of the time while he's sipping his coffee brandy. And we were thinking at one point, he his stories were so entertaining, even though, you know, not anchored or tethered to reality, really. Um, but he, he would make a great podcast oh, host. yes. The Drunk Landlord. Yep. Yeah. Sadly, we didn't. Follow up on that at all. Which is one of many things we never followed. Failed to follow up on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Kara writes, apparently this made national news, but due to my lack of watching the news, I must have missed it. <laughs> Below is one of the many news links detailing what happened in this case. Here's the short skinny. She has a personal attachment to this case. My husband came home and asked me, ever hear of a nurse cutting a patient's foot off? Well, first of all, a nurse's license wouldn't cover that type of procedure, even if they had an order, and not to mention the ethical portion to it. Wait, wh why? He was transported by minivan from a hotel to the train station by an employee. The lady driving him randomly and unprovoked said something to the effect of, quote, I have charges pending. <laughs> Uh, uh, we could just pull over here. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. Well, a good Google later, and he found out all this glorious information. My husband said that she is a real nice lady, and he's sure she didn't mean anything bad by it. Uh, and then there's a link. A nurse accused of removing patient's foot without permission. <laughs> he's sure she didn't mean anything bad by it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've got questions for that lady and for the husband. That, that comes from Mary, who is an RN and lives in Wisconsin. I love it. Andrea sent us a story that she simply entitled The Man in the Hat. Oh, yeah, man. My story dates back to when I was young, single, and slightly stupid. It was the year of 2010, and I was dating yet another loser. He told me, though, that his mother was able to see and sense spirits um, and that he kind of had a little bit of the sight as well. I didn't really know whether or not to believe him, but I just nodded and smiled. So the first night that I slept over at his place, he asked me what side of the bed I wanted, and I decided the side closest to the door because I kind of have a slightly nervous bladder and I may have to get up a couple times during the night to use the bathroom. So we fall asleep and it's around two or three in the morning and I wake up and roll over and I'm about to get out of bed to go to the bathroom when I notice a man standing in the doorway. We were the only two people in the house. <laughs> so I was definitely a little scared and confused. Um, I looked at him and he was wearing like a brown trench coat and one of those bowler hats or bowler hats, however it said. And I knew he had no reason to be there. So as a mature and responsible 21-year-old, um, I threw the covers over my head and rolled back over and pretended I didn't see anything. And I definitely didn't have to pee anymore. In the morning, when we woke up, he asked me how I slept. And 
uh, then I remembered what I had seen and I said to him, I slept okay, <laughs> except for when I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw someone. And he looked at me and said, oh, did you by any chance see a man wearing a trench coat and a hat? And I broke out in chills <laughs> and I said, yes, I did. And then he said, did you get out of bed? And I said, no, I did not. And he said, that's probably for the best. He's not one of the nice spirits that lives here. We broke up shortly after that, and I definitely never went back to that house. <laughs> you know, they should do a love is blind kind of show based around people who live in haunted houses. Oh, yeah. Because that is... How strong is your love? Yeah, right. Is it, it haunted house strong? Is it that big, the love you have for this person or not? You have to stay here and deal with the man in the trench coat and the hat. Alexana shared with us terms of endearment. My mom always called us kids, the six of us, ugly. Now, that sounds super mean, but it wasn't. <laughs> she thought all of us kids were beautiful, and some of us were so much so, there was maybe a bit of an ego problem. Hmm. Cough, cough, my brother, cough, cough. <laughs> She called us ugly just in case the fairy folk were listening. They wouldn't come and take us away if we were ugly. Interesting. To this day, I keep up the tradition. I call my kids big ugly. That's so amazing. That's I love that. fascinating. I'd like to know more about these fairy people that come and steal the beautiful children. That can't be true because you're still here. Ew. Uh, and I shared a video this week celebrating our sixth anniversary of the box of oddities. I am so grateful for you guys and all of the, the sweet things that you commented. Really, I was posting to thank you and then you said more nice things. So now I have to thank you again. It's really a vicious cycle. It is. It never ends. But it's one of those vicious cycles that we really love. Uh, yeah, I don't hate it. No, it's, it's really nice. Rachel said, congrats. You are my sunshine. You are my laughter. You are my resource on obscure random knowledge. Keep it coming. Oh. And a lot of other people said a really, a lot of other really nice things. And I, I just yeah. can't, I, it's too much. Too much. Well, the first video version of the Box of Oddities probably will end up on YouTube sometime in the next week or two. I think we're pretty close. We have, the studio is about ready. We're just looking for odd knickknacks to put on our bookshelves. And I found, uh, we went to a, an Incan history museum and they had reproductions of Incan statues. And pre-Incan. And pre-Incan, which is not as easy for me to say. Um, but I got an amazing piece. What is it? It represents Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks like it's genuine. But the lady at the gift shop said, uh, just so you know, this is a reproduction. And I appreciate her saying that. But I figured it you know, it was $8 probably. Not an authentic piece of um, ancient Incan pottery. Cute though. I like it. Curator at theboxofoddities.com. Thank you for sharing your stories and keep it up. We'll see you next time. Until then, keep flying that freak flag. And keep flying it proudly, you beautiful freak. And so... Let it be known that the Box of Oddities belongs to you, and its fate is in your hands. We wish to offer our deeply felt gratitude and appreciation for your patronage. TheBoxOfOddities.com On Facebook at Facebook.com slash Box of Oddities Podcast and Instagram at Box of Oddities Podcast. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved. Are you interested in the parts of history that remain a mystery? Do you want to learn more about the historical myths and misconceptions used to prop up false belief today? I'm Nathaniel Lloyd. In my podcast, Historical Blindness, I delve into all of these topics, sharing puzzling tales from the past and examining hoaxes, conspiracy theories, and misremembered events that provide insight into modern politics and religion. New episodes every two weeks. Find historical blindness on most podcast players and platforms.